Hi guys, today we're gonna to take another look at Azure Container Apps. This time we're gonna look at the networking that's involved with this and how you can integrate this with an Azure VNet. Now this allows us to create a VNet connection between a container running on a container app and something on a VNet. So that means that you could connect it to a virtual machine or even over a VPN if you wanted to do something like that. Today we're just gonna look at a VM and we're gonna allow that VM to pull up a website hosted on the VNet that's gonna be hosted in a container app and this will be brokered over a private connection. So you could use container apps for things like internal applications or backend services that you don't wanna to expose to the public internet or things like that. So let's just go over to the portal, create a container app instance, and then we will connect a VM to it and see how that works. Okay, now that I have my container app deployed, this uh, will take a minute to deploy if you're creating it from scratch. I'm gonna configure the ingress for this. You can actually do this when you create it. I just kind of clicked over that. But I'm gonna enable ingress. I'm gonna limit it to the VNets um, because I did select internal only for this and this is going to allow me to choose the transport here and i'm going to set it to the target port of 80. now this is for an http endpoint which is what my container is going to work on but you can also use this for other types of uh, ingress as well so you could use tcp for things like databases if you're running those in containers or other kinds of services if you wanted to use uh, different kinds of services in those containers as well but I'm going to click save on this and it's going to update that and now we'll come back when the ingress is finished. The next thing to do is configure the DNS for the virtual private network. Now this is needed so that the virtual machine can find the app and it's also needed so that the host header will be supplied to the load balancer uh, that is basically doing the load balancing internally for my container app. Now you don't see that per se, but it's there and the host header has to be sent to a given IP address and then that IP address will then be able to send the request to the appropriate uh, backend server that will handle it. So we have to create this private DNS record so that we can do that with. Now, the first thing that you'll wanna do is when you set up a private DNS zone is link it to your virtual network. You can see that I've already done that here. But the next thing to do is to add a zone into this guy. Currently, I don't have one. You can see that it actually has the, the VM scale sets that are behind the scenes that are running my app, uh, my container apps. And that's what these IP addresses are for right here. And that's just basically allowing me to have something there to run my containers. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they're on and being utilized, but that is what those are for. And when I create a record right here, I am going to create a record that's going to have the IP address of my environment, but it's going to have the host name for my container app. So my environment, I have a static IP address that is an internal IP address right here. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm going to put this into the IP address right here. Now I could put star right here and that would work. Uh, that would resolve all of the container apps that I might have running on my container app environment to that IP address. Now, if I do that, that will allow me to only have basically a single uh, container app environment that it, this particular private DNS is going to use. And that means that I couldn't have more than one uh, in a given uh, region if they were going to share the same private DNS zone or something like that. So you can do this. Uh, I probably wouldn't do that. I would probably actually go in and just get the host name for your application, which is right here. Now, uh, this isn't publicly exposed, so that's not going to resolve anything. But I'm basically just going to take the, the host name portion of this, which is this, this part right here. And then this is the eastus.azurecontainerapps.io, which uh, I don't need. And I'm going to paste this in right here. So you can see that it has the full uh, domain name for my app here. And then it's going to point to that record right there. And I'm going to click OK. And that's going to create a record right here for my app. Now. now, once I have that, my virtual machine should be able to find that and connect to it without any problems. So let's go ahead and launch the virtual machine and then connect to this application. So to get to my virtual machine, I'm basically just going to go back to my resource group over here and I'm going to find the virtual machine that I created uh, before I started uh, recording this. And this is just a Windows uh, 11 VM. So nothing special here. It's just a stock image that I have running here. So I'm gonna connect to this using RDP and I'm just gonna download the RDP uh, file right here. 
And then I'm gonna open this guy up, connect to it, and it's gonna ask me for my password. I'm gonna punch that in. And uh, this should launch the uh, RDP client with this host. So here is my virtual machine. So let's uh, minimize this guide for just a second. And I'm gonna get the host name so I can copy and paste it. So um, that's right here, that's the application URL. So I can copy that and I can then go back to my virtual machine, which is on that VNet. So I'm gonna launch Explore here, or Edge rather, and um, paste in that name. And uh, this should pull up a list of files. Now that resolved the name right there. And I can click on this uh, VNC and then I'll just show you this little uh, demo right here using Commander Keen. So if I click install, I think, well, I had to go to this um, folder right here. And then this is just using uh, WebSockets to display a VNC client uh, back with uh, DOSBox installed with Commander Keen inside of a container. I've used this for other demos. So if you've been watching this channel before, you may have seen this before, but it's just an old DOS game. But this is running on Azure Container Apps, streaming the results uh, back through uh, WebSockets to a browser and then rendering it on the Canvas API using that uh, as just a simple way to run this. And it, it runs a little sluggish on container apps because I'm, I don't have a lot of CPU at this, but it runs well enough. But in any case, that's my demo. That, so let's try to pull this up on the, the machine that I'm actually using to record this, which is not on the VNAT. It's just, um, it's not able to connect to any of those resources on that VNAT. So I shouldn't be able to uh, get onto this app because it won't be publicly exposed. And uh, you can see that it's not working there. And so I can't get to this app externally, but on a virtual machine, I can, which is good. That's what we want because this is on a private VNet and it's not something that's publicly exposed. So this would be good for backend APIs, for internal applications and things like that that you don't want on the public internet.